Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mario and in this video we're going to talk about simplified topology. So uh, what does that mean is that I try to combine all the most basic, most simplest, most fundamental rules regarding the topology in a simple, simple rules to follow uh, before continuing deeper into let's say uh, topology exploration. Because what I do notice a lot is that the redirection or redirection rules are sometimes overused and they can be very, very confusing for anybody just starting out with 3D modeling. So in this case, we are just going to take another approach where we are taking a look into those kind of like the most basic things like why having an even distribution of edges and polygons is important, why the block out of that stage is also going to be important and the importance of the highlight and how the highlight actually helps us define the direction because a lot of the questions that I see on my channel is also like, isn't it convenient that we always have topology that is supporting the shapes that we are making? And it's really not convenient in itself, as it's more like we make it convenient because of the flow that we are using or the direction of the edges that we are using or simply because we are following that highlight. So based on that information, we kind of covered everything here. So yeah, I won't take that much of your time, so let's get started. All right, so before we begin, let's define one of the biggest rules that we should follow almost at all times and not break it where, where we can is the topology distribution or edge distribution um, or polygon distribution is going to be right here, what you see on the screen. So this grid right here is going to represent the topology or the edge structure that we are looking for. So whenever we are creating anything, it's always going to be our job number one to get as even number or or as even topology organization as you see it here so even polygons even even distances between the edges when we see this something like this we know that we don't have that so the edges here are not even we have a triangle we have a rectangle and all polygons here are not the same size what we are looking for though is that even size now however uh, now to get to that even size there's one rule that needs to be defined before it and that rule is going to be the initial block out or the initial quads to get us started these are going to be kind of like those initial quads they need to be even as well or as even as possible so now our job here at the very very start is going to be to search for those biggest quads and establish them first before doing anything else so if i would now delete let's say all of the edges from here i would need to now search those biggest biggest quads. Some of them are already established, if you already see here. If I remove, let's say, these edges from here, you're going to see that now we have three quads that are more or less same in size. And this is exactly what we're looking for. So three quads that are even in size, more or less, and they need to be kind of like as close as possible. The reason for it is the following. If I now start to add edge loops, they're just going to continue and continue and continue regardless of how much edges we add we are still maintaining that clean form that we had at the very beginning so now we can go deeper and deeper and deeper into topology and still we're going to maintain even polygons and even distances between the edges so that is why it's, it's extremely important to have those initial quads as even as possible so those are kind of like those two rules that we should not break whenever we can so we cannot continue further. So let's take another example. So let's now, let's say, delete these right here. So now we have two biggest quads. However, they're not that even. Uh, we can even them out by adding an edge loop here. So now they're more or less evened out. So again, now when we know, okay, we have that first rule established, uh, before creating any kind of topology, we need to be sure that these sort of like the beginning stages are even now because those again can be our shape defining polygons so this one can be shape defining this one can be shape defining if we have too many polygons defining the shape is going to be much harder so once we have that we can do the same thing just simply continue into the topology deeper and deeper and regardless of how much edges we now add we're still going to maintain that even even spread so the only difference is now how the edges are organized. We're gonna have here this flow, and here we're gonna have this flow. Here, we're gonna have this one, top, we're gonna have that one. So this is now kind of like the, the difference between the two. So continuing forward, let's do one more. 
Uh, so let's again remove all of these. Let's remove all of these and let's see where we could find again those biggest, biggest quads. One of them could be here. So again, let me just remove all the points. And again, two of the biggest quads. This is our beginning. This can also be that, let's say, shape defining edge. And then we can just continue adding polygons. Continue adding edges and depending on how much of a density we need, then we would stop. But more or less, let's say we are satisfied with this and there we go. So now we have three examples and in each three examples, we do get sort of like a different, uh, different flow. So if I would kind of like select all of these, so we're going to have this one, we're going to have this one, we're going to have this one. So three different uh, variations, three different edge flows. Uh, all right. So now that we know that the biggest polygons first, then the even spread. So the two important rules. Uh, how do we know when to use, let's say, each flow or how do we know when to approach um, these parts differently or how do we know when do we search each flow and whatnot? Because this surface right now is flat, so we can explore safely and see what all the variation possibly we have. But if the surface is a little bit different, then probably we don't have that same uh, freedom. So, so how do we know when to use each flow is going to be based on this right here, the highlights. So the highlights are going to be defining or form defining and based on the highlights, either on the reference or whatever object you're trying to create, the highlights are going to be the finding factor where we are looking for those biggest quads before we continue deeper into the topology. So I would definitely recommend checking the couple of videos before this one. We're going to just continue on the topic of importance of support loops, edge flow and adding subdivision. And here we're just going to talk about kind of like that simplified topology uh, in its core. All right, so starting here with the first example, we're going to see that the highlight is defined right here and right here. So that means that the polygons that we have here are not going to help us that much in defining that shape if, let's say, they are in our way. For example, if these two edges would be in our way, we would remove them. And the same rule now applies. Let's create those biggest polygons first. And those biggest polygons are going to be right here. And we know that they are because we can easily create the form that we need from them. And there is no other edges that are in our way or preventing us from creating that form. So we have all the necessary uh, parameters established. So we have uh, the quads, even quads to begin with. And those quads also establish the general form or the general highlight. So these now will become our support loops. So when we apply a material, we're going to have our defining shape. And then the only thing what we need to do is just start adding or populating the topology depending on, let's say, the density that we need. And there we go. So now we have established topology. We are prepared for, uh, let's say, further development. We have established highlights and that is job, job done. Now, continuing to the second example, we're going to follow the same rule. So we're going to need to have an edge that defines the highlight. So first of all, before doing any of that, let's just make sure that we don't have any edges in our way that are actually not contributing to anything. So if something is not contributing to the form, we don't need it. We have those biggest polygons established. We can add that one like we had before, even though right now it's not necessary. We establish the form that we need. Once we have that form, now we are tied to that form. We cannot really experiment the same way like we did on a flat surface because now this highlight is defined for us. So this is that thing that tells us, yeah, no, now we cannot explore any other variations like we did in the beginning. There's only one possible way, and that is by following the highlight that is already established. And then the only thing we need to do is just populate topology, and there we go. Apply the material, and we have managed to get the result that we want. Same thing is going to be now with uh, the final example, where for the final example, we do not really have an edge that we can add here, or we cannot do nothing with the current level of the topology to establish this form. So if we started, let's say with something, we started from a cube, and now we are struggling to see, okay, but how can I from the topology that I have, create the form here, the question is going to be, yeah, you're going to, to probably need to redefine your the beginning stage or redefine your blackout so that that highlight is actually being followed. So in that case, this is something that we're going to do here. We're going to need to add an edge 
that actually gives us that highlight and that edge is going to be this one right here so since this edge it's much more important than any of the others the other edges simply can go so now we have edge defining or shape defining edge that actually helps us create the form that we need let's say no other edges are in the way we have that rule established the biggest quad is there or even we don't even have to add support loops again referring to the previous video that we did we can now simply add a topology let's say and that topology is going to hold the corner so let's say we add a uh, material and now we have let's say a softer co corner though it's not as sharp and if we still let's say want to add a sharper corner we can always add those two support loops to sharpen it up and there we go so that is now job complete uh, but yeah let's again do a small summary of what we're looking for so again we're looking for that even distribution of edges and polygons and then when we know the highlight or if we do not know the highlight first thing what we need to do is search for those the biggest quads and make sure that they are as even as possible as well then we're going to look is if there is a highlight requirement so if there's if there is a highlight requirement then we're going to need to establish that highlight with those minimum number of edges while maintaining those biggest quads even and then once we have that then we're going to populate topology further so that is going to be kind of like the breakdown um, that i would recommend especially if you're just starting out or if topology is a little bit still maybe not as clear to you as it should be or you you're missing some kind of like you have some gaps in understanding this is definitely something that i would uh, recommend starting starting to do first or doing first uh, there's now one more thing to discuss and that is the sort of like a redirection now for a small disclaimer we now sort of like covered the simplified topology or the most simplest rules that you need to know to get you started to get kind of like though that ball rolling just to get those beginning wheels of understanding now redirection is going to be that next next step i'm not going to cover it in this video because i think it's just going to cause much more confusion than necessary and i would highly recommend doing the steps what we did here in the beginning and try to explore the topology or try to explore the forms without doing this what we do right now so that is going to be extremely beneficial once you come to this point to understand why is it important so i hope that makes sense but i'm just going to open the window uh, for what it's waiting for you so that you know how to prepare it or how to be prepared and why is it actually uh, important so like i mentioned also before i do have an extensive topology workshop on this if you want to feel free to visit uh, the link in the description down below so this is a much more extensive uh, let's say training and this is again just a small window in what it's what it's there so uh now the thing about redirection is that it can be extremely confusing because it's opening a lot of new doors and here what i mean is let's say we're looking for that even even spread is going to be this but now what to do with triangles you're going to see that now the edges are stopping on a triangle here and here so how do you know do we do let's say a edge loop here or edge loop here or do we do an edge loop here or an edge loop here so again that answer is going to be um, based again on what we are doing is there a highlight is there not a highlight to follow is, if there is not then of course there's much more room to, to kind of like play around and if we let's say do these two edges then we see that we sort of like bring that imbalance where we have now different uh, edge flows or different sizes in edges so instead of let's say doing this one we're just going to do these two instead so i'm going to create another copy and let's do this one first so more or less we have even distribution edges except the polygons but now here's the thing what happens when you have a triangle so i'm going to try to balance one end so let's let's try it like this i'm going to try to balance the middle i'm going to try to get the most even polygons in the middle and I'm going to try to do the same thing on the sides. So you see now what's happening is that here I have more or less the balance flow and here I'm not getting that balance that I should. So this is something what we would call imbalanced mesh. So if I would continue, let's say, try to balance it here. So let's say this is also not looking as it should like here. So let me try to balance that too. 
what happens is that I balance this one, but now I unbalance this one. So I previously had something like this, but now I have much worse situation, but I fixed this one here. So as you notice, you kind of like chasing yourself in a circle, basically. So you try to balance one end, and when you balance that one end, the other end becomes in balance. So this is now kind of like the issue with redirection. So with redirection, we need to be extremely careful of, and we need to be sure of the reason why we are using it. So another example here is going to be, even we have a triangle, it's still going to be necessary to do some manual work and kind of like even those polygons again as much as we can. So even though they're not as even, even though let's say we would push this one slightly to the side, maybe even this one slightly to the side, we would still need to kind of like that, put that manual work in just to be sure that more or less our polygons are even. So notice that we did very little work there, very little manual work, but now we are more free to add those divisions and they're now a little bit more organized. They're not as chaotic as in first example, even though that we did the just minor change, the result is sort of like drastically different. So as you can see here, for example, uh, in difference in topology and here in difference in topology, so we are getting a little bit more of a cleaner result. Uh, so there's going to be definitely a situations where we're going to use this. Situations like this are going to be rare, they're going to be unique, but important rule of them all is whenever you encounter redirection, whenever you encounter, let's say, a redirection like this, or even a redirection that goes, let's say, something like this, which is also common redirection, let's say, turning triangles into uh, edges like so, let's say, this type of redirection that you see probably online a lot is never going to be used or extremely rarely is going to be used to define a shape, but it's more going to be used to close down the shapes or to fine tune the shapes, prepare for detailing stage and whatnot. So when you're practicing topology, just make sure to avoid redirection in those beginning stages. You can always do it kind of like a variation of your, let's say, practice but it's rarely, extremely rarely, is going to be a part of a defining defining form. Uh, so again, now finally to wrap it up, what would be those most simple rules to follow when we are talking about topology are going to be even spread, is going to be always something that we look for, even spread of, the, of uh, polygons, even spread of edges, so that more or less the distance between the edges is the same all over the mesh, regardless in which position you are. So that is going to be kind of like, the ultimate goal of what we're looking for. How do we achieve that goal is by having at the very beginning of our blockout stages that we have well established blockout where the polygons or the biggest polygons themselves are more or less in the even, even size so that these establishing polygons have more or less even size. That is going to be so sort of like that initial guide towards having that even spread of topology. And that is going to be kind of like those golden simplify rules when we are creating those shapes. Uh, as a small reminder, like I mentioned before, this video, what we talked in this video is just a continuation of what we talked in the video before this, where we talked about the importance of subdivision, importance of edge flow, importance of uh, support loops. And also there is a small example where we created sort of like that's um, Mortal Kombat Max mask where you see all this kind of like rules um, put in practice. Now, like I mentioned, this is again, just a simplified version of the topology. There's a lot to talk about here on my channel. I also have a video called Understanding Topology if you want to check that out. And finally, again, if you wish, there is a complete topology workshop where we talk about topology sort of like as an anatomy of a hard surface where you go into extreme depth almost to obsessive levels i would say where we discuss every single thing um, in more detail so yeah uh, stay tuned for the next video because in the next video we're going to talk about uh, redirection and how redirection impacts our, our surface and there are also going to be some other important topics to cover so yeah thank you very much for watching and i'm going to see you next time